How is Japan able to sustain a large debt as a percentage of GDP, while Greece could not? Japan is currently the nation with the highest debt as a percentage of GDP, at the time of writing it stands at over 250%. Greece, currently the second most indebted nation, went through a decade-long debt crisis after the 2008 financial crash. It entered this crisis with debt levels of only 103% of GDP, and over the entire debt crisis, this only increased to 181% of GDP. How is Japan able to withstand this level of debt without entering a debt crisis similar to Greece? Is this the right metric to look at, or are there other factors specific to either country? Their economies are radically different otherwise. Greece has a weak economy in most fields, with the exception of tourism. Japan is a manufacturing and scientific powerhouse. Greece runs recurring high deficits and had rarely, if ever, shown inclination to stop doing so. While Japan was criticized at the start of their financial decline for insisting on balanced budgets instead of stimulating demand. Tax collection. Japan does it. Greece didn't. Japan could devaluate its currency if necessary to adjust its finances. Greece couldn't, being on the euro. Japanese government debt is, I believe, mostly owed to Japanese investors and denominated in yen, unlike Greece's. Japan has demonstrated for decades that it can pay its bills, on its own. Greece on the other hand just seemed as if the only thing that kept it up was euro membership. Until 2008, Greece was only getting charged a 0.25% premium over German bonds based on the tacit assumption that Europe would never let Greece go broke. Dot. Investors, out of greed and risk unawareness or trust in European taxpayers' gullibility, parked their money in Greek bonds, rather than German ones, just to get that extra 0.25. From https colon slash slash www.bankofgreece.gr slash publications slash anrep 1999.pdf I find it hard to set hard time limits on Google to only look at stuff from before a date. Specifically, the yield differential between the Greek and the German 10-year bond fell from roughly 270 basis points at end 1998 to about 200 basis points in March. 1999 see chart v.1 at the start of the general crisis investors started wondering if trusting that europe would always back greek debt even when undergoing a europe-wide crisis was a wise idea the game was up very quickly then financing costs for greek government debt went up quickly from that 0.25 percent extra any refinancing started happening at higher rates a debt that looked already problematic with that 0.25% spread seemed like it would result in a short-term default with a higher and higher financing costs. People still financed Greece, but the premium to do so was massive and made this very quickly unsustainable. The plug was pulled, late high-rate private and non-European investors got a haircut. Europe's taxpayers paid up enough money for Greece to keep paying slightly lowered interests, at deferred times, to the big German and French big banks so they wouldn't take too massive a loss. Most Greek debt remained in place, unlike what happens in say an Argentinian default. In a way, though it fully deserved the deserved the initial mess it got, that's the tragedy of Greece. Instead of the reset that comes with a default, it got this unending misery of servicing a debt which is only pretended to be fully recoverable from but no one is too willing to put their hands in that wolf's jaws anymore. As O. M. says, mostly perception. Until COVID at least, Japan looks like it has a few good years left for investors most of whom are Japanese and have little interest in rocking the boat. This is not to say it is financially healthy, only that it is under less external pressure. Greece relies on foreign money, didn't look good in 2008 and doesn't now. In most other conditions, big chunks of that 181% would have been written off as unrecoverable already.